Hi, my name is Jacob Barney, and I'm from Virginia Tech in the School of Plant and Environmental Sciences. And I'm here representing a group of faculty and students at the university. Um, we call ourselves the Invasive Species Working Group. And we've been working over the past several years um, on a variety of avenues that are um, all related to invasions, of course. But um, here we're going to share uh, some of the work that we've been doing in connecting stakeholders uh, across the Commonwealth with the uh, motivation to uh, establish connections and identify places for collaboration to address the invasive species challenge. And obviously this is uh, not news to anyone who would be watching this presentation, but uh, invasive species are of course a clear and present danger and are cited as one of the top five challenges uh, to, to the planet. And there's been a lot of nice work recently here I'm showing um, some work that's called the um, GLONAF database that's uh, uh, recently from a group out of Europe that has identified all of the naturalized plant species across the globe. And clearly there's some places where the data is lacking, but the number of invasive species is, is quite large. And not only is the, um, the challenge uh, a great one at the moment, but it's slated to get worse. Uh, on the left side, you can see that um, this is from work a couple years ago for using the same database um, and expanding it that the number of new introductions for most taxa continues to increase, suggesting that even though we've known about invasive species for a very long time now, uh, we are, have yet to preclude new introductions. So the problem is only likely to intensify with time. And on the right, you can see the global exchange of plant species. Um, the, uh, it's truly a, a mind-boggling globalized world with plants moving um, across all continents and spaces. And uh, of course, um, much work has been done on invasive species across um, the U.S. and the world, um, but something that our university um, has done in the um, recent past to address invasive species along with um, a litany of other um, issues facing the globe was to formalize a new center. And this was uh, formed in 2015. And this is in recognition of the multiple facets of global change um, and how these interact with each other. Now this, um, there are several centers across the US that focus on climate change or some other of these aspects. But at the time, this was, I believe, the first center focused on all um, five aspects of global change, at least the ones we've identified here of habitat loss pollution, invasive species, disease, and climate change. And I was part of this group um, formalizing this new center. And um, it was meant to be more than just getting people um, together, but really to look at where the interfaces are. And this was um, built on actually a um, slightly earlier formation of uh, interdisciplinary graduate education program. These are uh, based on some of the older NSF graduate programs uh, that were funded to support graduate education around certain topics. And um, internally at Virginia Tech, there's several of these, and uh, we got one on the interfaces of global change, which were again, those same five elements of global change, but really trying to focus on the interfaces. Where is it that invasive species and climate change interact or pollution and disease, for example? And there's a heavy policy focus here where um, many students in our experience are very interested in policy and the intersection between science and policy. And so we have, um, this is a foundation to the graduate program. And, um, you know, this was, um, this has been very successful and we've gotten tremendous growth. In fact, the program has grown so large. Um, we have over 50 students across the university in the program and we have probably well over 70 faculty in the Global Change Center. Um, this has actually led to somewhat of a problem in that we grew too big and the size of the group began to interfere with our ability to um, have productive outcomes. And so uh, the director um, decided to come up with what he called these creative collisions, borrowing a term from um, other groups and uh, some seed funding was provided and we were asked to formalize around um, concepts of our own choosing. And we of course focused on invasive species and here's some of the other 
uh, uh, groups that formed out of that. And so this was a few years ago, and we um, have formalized ourselves into a, a working group. And here from the text, you can see the, the working group is really focused on um, science policy management and their intersections, in particular, the science policy interface. Uh, we feel this is a, um, an element that we can make the most um, meaningful impact because there's lots of science being done globally. Um, but there's less work being done on the interface and building connections. And this was, um, we had a lot of participation early just across our own university. We had more than 40 faculty show interest across um, many colleges. Um, that has sort of winnowed itself down into um, a, a group that is uh, sort of leading many of the um, elements that you'll see shortly. So we've got uh, four different uh, units across campus of faculty and one graduate student who are sort of the board, if you will, uh, of the working group. And one of the very first things we identified that we wanted to do, um, we got some seed funding um, internally from um, some of the uh, upper administration and some of the other uh, unit institutes on campus. And we were able to do whatever we felt would be most meaningful. And the first thing we decided to do was engage stakeholders. Uh, we recognize that academia often occurs in a bubble, um, but there's people in a wide variety of sectors across the state that are working on invasive species. So for example, this uh, invasive tree here, we know uh, there's researchers, land managers, NGOs, policymakers, all working on invasive species. And of course, there's the public. And um, often, at least in our experience, there's been not a lot of connections among these individual groups. And so one of the first things we wanted to do was to bring together as many of these um, players as we could. And so what we decided to do was hold a workshop on campus. Uh, we rented out one of the luxury boxes at our football stadium. And we used our seed funding from the university to host this workshop. Um, no registration fees. We sent out a broad uh, invitation to everyone we knew across the state. And the, the goal here was we had two keynote speakers, uh, Dr. Jamie Reeser and Dr. Uh, Heather Andrews. And the idea here was um, to sort of set the foundation for science and policy is what each of the speakers were um, setting it up. And then uh, the goal was to really just to build connections and collaboration across invasive species. And we had many goals across, of course, we had people um, from uh, very diverse groups uh, representing many stakeholders um, across the state. Um, we were looking for shared interests. Uh, of course, not everybody was working on plants. We had animals and insects and diseases and all, all kinds of agricultural pests aquatic and terrestrial and really the the outcome that we were striving for was um, looking to build a coalition and this is not meant to replace our invasive species working group or the noxious weed committees or the prisms or the other groups that are across the state but really to build bridges across those groups and see how we could support diverse um, facilitation of making advancements and connections across the invasive species space and um, looking for a unified message and funding and of course we had lots of goals um, not all of which we were able to achieve in this single day um, but this was this was broadly where we were headed with this um, we set this up um, in, uh, we had you know greater than 60 people um, show up uh, which was fantastic. They represented a broad diversity of backgrounds. And really, we were looking to build connections across this research, education, policy, and management space. Um, the talks were really great. We had lots of activities meant to build um, collaboration, um, um, sort of think, pair, shares, lots of breakout connections. And really, one of the early things we identified was that the communication pathways are very much not um, equivocal across groups. We have researchers doing um, cool work and disseminating that out. Um, sometimes policymakers are consumers of that. Um, in some cases, NGOs are working with researchers. In some cases, land managers are working with researchers. But one of the major outcomes is that we realized the communication was not 
um, was really not that great. Uh, it's often unidirectional, um, going one direction and not coming back. Land managers are doing excellent work on the ground and often that information and their experiences are not being shared back up the chain to researchers and the NGOs and the public is often sort of left hanging out there. Of course, cooperative extension plays a role here, but there's lots of opportunities to facilitate better uh, communication. And uh, that was one of our major themes and this may um, not be terribly surprising, but um, I think it was important for all of us to realize that there was a break. There's there's opportunities to facilitate better communication among among stakeholders, and there's uh, abundant opportunities for collaboration. Of course, everything's limited by money, but um, I think one of the um, quotes that sort of really stuck with me was that just being in the in the same room is a major first step. A lot of people are working on similar shared challenges, but just in different silos. And there's a lot of experiences and opportunities that um, would really facilitate sort of breaking down that knowing doing gap by um, communication and collaboration. Uh, we wrote this up and published it in Invasive Plant Science and Management, just showing what our experience was um, and where what our outcomes were. We're, we're really looking to, to generate some uh, communication, collaboration, and um, connections. And, you know, obviously this is a, a, a long way ahead here. Um, this was just the first step. There's leadership, there's necessary money, of course, and really just building baby steps. And I think those baby steps started with um, just being in the same room and having some conversations. So the next thing we did, we had an additional year of funding was we decided to do what we call the devising seminar, where we invited specific um, representatives of different stakeholder groups across the state. And we rented a place in Richmond, um, brought them all together. Um, we, we did a pre-survey and a post-survey um, to understand challenges and opportunities in the invasive species space. Again, representing lots of different stakeholder groups, um, really just getting a sense for what what their view of invasive species were in Virginia. I think this is probably representative of a wide variety of states, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, people have uh, concerns of invasive species across a diverse number of elements of, of the human condition. And what was interesting here is to see, you know, how, um, how well are we doing in the state regarding addressing invasive species and um, sort of the general consensus is that we're not doing enough. There's not enough regulation, there's not enough enforcement, and there's certainly never enough funding. And of course, this is probably the situation um, uh, across much of uh, many states is that funding would be always be um, more is better. Uh, this was sort of interesting. The top graphs here show concerns that, you know, currently rank in relative importance um, where you know, research and science um, are, are you know, often viewed as really important, but uh, the bottom here shows what how they should rank in that political and maybe even public concerns should be much higher um, than they are currently. So uh, what we took away from that was there's some opportunities to do some education and um, outreach on educating policymakers and the public uh, on invasive species. So um, just to summarize this, you know, really we're, we're, we're facilitating coalition building here, bringing diverse stakeholders together um, towards a, a single unified goal. Um, this is meant to be in collaboration with, of course, the Virginia Invasive Species Management Plan and all the players there, some of which were represented at our workshops. Um, uh, but really, we felt this was an excellent first step towards uh, getting people together who maybe otherwise wouldn't be able to for a variety of reasons. And so that felt like a meaningful work towards our common goal. And I just briefly want to share something else we've been doing. Uh, we also have a pretty heavy element of uh, graduate education through the working group. We took a, we've taught a couple classes, mostly focused on um, science policy. And last year we took a dozen or more students to uh, Capitol Hill and we met with uh, a whole bunch of different groups across um, the sort of DC political spectrum um, from executive branch to NGOs, industry. We had a legislator and some staffers come in the media and we got a really amazing in-depth tour across the three days we were there uh, on the invasive species space in DC and um, how it works, maybe how underrepresented it is. Uh, we sort of came out with some really interesting connections among 
the, the space in the federal government. Um, so that was that was really great, and we hope we can do that in the future if funding allows. So just to summarize, um, really we're 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 working towards building connections and a coalition across invasive species, and this has been really uh, meaningful um, for all of the faculty involved and the students on uh, understanding the space across the state and identifying barriers and opportunities. Now we got a lot of future plans. Uh, our coronavirus is put, presenting challenges to this as it is to everything else. We had lots of stuff planned for this year, all of which had to be postponed, but we're hoping to continue this when it's safe. Um, here's our brief webpage, and I'd be happy to communicate with anybody of interest. Thanks a lot.